Hello everyone. I am Kerry McGilvery. I am your wild woman guide and I am going to take you through this three day manifest it challenge today. Da today is day one. So just give me a moment. I would like to share this into, doesn't look like I can do that, um, into a couple of other groups. So I will share that into the other group just momentarily. So what I would like you all to do first is if you could possibly tell me where you're from, that's a great start. I always love to hear where everyone is joining me from. Um, if you'd like to do that, I do have a couple of notes and we can go through everything for day one. So today we are going to look at intentions. Now let's go through why intentions are different to goals. This is the first thing that we want to look at when we're talking about manifesting. Now goals are very action driven. They're very action orientated. They're all about do this, do that. Uh, goals can turn into similar to like a to-do list. So when you're trying to set intentions, goals are very, very different. They have their own place um, during the manifestation process, but they are not where we start where we start will always be with our intentions. Now, our intentions are something that's a bit more emotional. Now, an intention is something that it's a desire that we wish to bring in. It's, it's not linked to an action. So it could be that we desire to bring in abundance or that we desire to bring in a new job um, or that we desire better health. You know, these things are all very emotionally charged. And usually when you set an intention, there's an emotion behind it. And then what you will talk about then, what we will talk about tomorrow is inspired action. And that's where some of the goals can come into play. But what we will talk about today is all about intentions. Now, some of the things that I talk to my ladies in my group about is that we need to do incremental intentions. And what I mean by that is so when... When you set an intention, say for example, that you would like a new house. This is a very common intention. Um, and what you will find is that wherever you are, you need to start there, right? So you can, you can have the big dreams and just know that, you know, when you're desiring and you're setting intentions for a new house, that a new house doesn't always come next week right? Sometimes it does when everything is lined up and ready and you've done all the other incremental changes. But when it comes to um, being normal and the, I'm telling you the no bullshit, right? In everyday normal manifesting, the house doesn't come next week. What will happen though is say, for example, if your job needs to be upgraded in order for you to afford that house, that may come first. So, when we're looking at our intentions, we wanna have some slightly logical approach in the fact that we, we want to make sure that we're reaching just a little bit further than where we already are, because what it'll do is it'll bring the intention to you quicker, which means you don't have to wait as long, which gets you progress towards your bigger intentions. So I always talk about doing incremental intentions so that you can just go that little bit further, a little bit further, a little bit further, and before you know it, it's here. When we start to focus on, you know, like I said, we might need to get that new job first before we can afford that house that we want. Instead of just focusing on manifesting the house and, and ignoring everything else, um, what will happen if you ignore everything else is you'll miss the opportunities that the universe is sending you to get that house because there's a lot of steps involved in, in gaining something that is so big. The universe doesn't have a problem providing it. That's not a problem at all. It's all about getting the right, um, how do I say it? The right steps all the way through. And just remember when you do set an intention, I always set the intention that we manifest what is what I, intend so whatever I write down on my manifestation list so I always set the intention that I manifest that or better and I allow the universe the freedom in the delivery and the reason that we do that is because sometimes they know better right 
we can only dream from our existence, our current state of existence, and from our history and our past and what we know. There's a lot of things that we don't know. We do not know everything in this world and we don't know everything in the ether either. So what we need to understand is we need to give the universe sometimes that flexibility in the delivery because you just need to pay attention to the signs along the way, right? If you follow the breadcrumbs, you'll find the house. So this is how it all works. This is the first part, the first stage that we need to look at when we're talking about our intentions. What we also do with our intentions is we go through a visualization process. Now this visualization process is all about bringing the feeling of having those intentions already happen into your body, imagining what your life would look like, what it would feel like, how, how you would act differently or how you wouldn't maybe, depends on what you're manifesting. Um, and visualizing that through meditation what it will be like bringing that into your life, how your life will change, how you would be different in any way, shape or form. Maybe you'll have more energy. Maybe you have a nicer house. Maybe your family will be happier. All those kinds of different things. Maybe you won't feel so stressed or anxious. Maybe they're just the simple things that you want to aim for. These are all really important things that we need to look at when we're setting intentions. Now, I don't want to keep... I don't want to make this complicated, which is why I'm doing the whole no nonsense, no bullshit approach. And what I want to talk about now is so, so we've got intentions down pat. We all know what that is now. If you do have any questions about it, please put, pop them below and I will answer where I can. But what we also want to make sure is what usually goes wrong, right? Because that's what happens. We all go, oh, I've tried this manifesting stuff before. Right, I've read the books, I've followed their formula. Their formula said this and that and this and that and you know, had 12 steps to it, whatever it was, right? And what we found was it always went wrong. We always fell short. So today I'm gonna cover also what goes wrong when we're setting our intentions so that you might notice what's been coming up for you right? So one of the things that may have been going wrong when you set your intentions is that you're actually setting a goal, not an intention. Now, a goal is, it's less emotional. When you don't have an emotion behind an intention, you don't feel it in your body, therefore you don't integrate it. Therefore, it makes it harder for the universe to deliver something you're not attached to, right? So you don't have an emotional reasoning behind what you're trying to bring in which basically means it's just a thought vibration and not all thought vibrations are the same. If they're not emotionally charged in the positive sense, then they just float in the ether. They don't really do much, right? So, you know, for example, some of us might have the goal, which we think is our intention, to lose four kilos, right? That could be our intention. It's really a goal, Right, because none of us are really super excited about losing four kilos, to be honest. Most of us look at that, like the ones of us who actually are at a phase where we need to shift that weight. We're not excited about losing four kilos. Hell no, we're dreading the fact that we need to lose four kilos. What we do get excited about is the fact that our health will improve, our pain will reduce, we can run longer with our kids. These are the things that will be our intention. So our intention in that particular scenario would be to be healthier, to make better food choices, right? To run around longer with my kids and not be puffed. To, um, you know, go vegetarian if that's your thing. Whatever it is, you make the health choice. The thing that lights you up, the thought of, oh my God, if I can actually get this health sorted, then my pain's going to be gone, right? And you know, that's something that I, I go through from time to time with the RA. So I, I try and focus on improving my health and not the weight loss. Because if you improve your health, 
the weight loss is a given, right? They kind of go hand in hand, but if I focus on the weight loss as an intention, which really it's a kind of a goal, it doesn't really, doesn't drive me excited and it doesn't inspire me, the weight loss. But if I focus on the weight loss as my intention, I always fail. But what I do is if I shift it to being healthier, you know, being fitter and pain free, then I have better, more motivation motivation behind my intention because I'm emotionally connected to that because I don't want the pain anymore. That's very, very easy for me to make that choice because then the choice becomes, well, if I eat a hamburger, for example, and, you know, fries covered in cheese or whatever it is, right? If I eat, eat the thing that I shouldn't be eating, then it's going to hurt. Literally, it's going to hurt. So, then it's very simple for me. Do I want the pain or do I don't want the pain? It's a very simple choice. Whereas if, if I focus on the, you know, the four kilos side of the intention, which is more the goal, then what I will do is I will rationalize that choice, right? Because I will go, well, it's just a cheat day. So it becomes a very different conversation when you're emotionally attached and charged in your intentions. Now, I want to be very clear when it comes to our intentions that yes, we, they need to be emotionally charged, they need to be felt in the body, they need to be all of those things. But when it comes to the attachment of the outcome of those intentions, we need to be fluid. We need to go with the flow, we need to allow the universe to deliver it in the way it sees fit. Because even though, you know, I would like to make all those healthy choices, Maybe my thought pattern on how to get there, so my, like, weight's a really great example, right? Because everyone, you know, knows someone who's been there. So for me, for example, if I focused on the weight loss, then I would do the things, right? So the weight loss would be the goal, the inspired action to do that goal, which we will talk more about tomorrow and how to get that. It would just be an action plan, right? So it would just be, right, need to walk five times a week. I need to make sure I eat just veggies. I need to get more juice, get more smoothies, you know, whatever it may be. It just becomes like a shopping list, right? And there's nothing very exciting about that shopping list. So what you can do with your intentions is just you let go of the attachment. And in my case specifically this week, I have been focusing on I've started a 12-week challenge, it's a transformation challenge, and it's actually not around weight. So for me, it's not about dropping the weight, it's actually about getting healthier. Because if I get healthier and make healthier choices and move a little bit more, then my pain's going to reduce, there's a possibility I will come off my injections, which means that I've got a better chance of being here longer for my kids, right? So these are very, very motivating and they're very emotionally charged. And I trust that the universe will deliver the inspiration that I need to keep on track. And already it's sent me the inspiration to walk a couple of times this week, the inspiration to choose healthier choices. And not only that, it sent me a, God, a fairy godmother who's going to help me on my journey. So actually it sent me two. So it's been extremely helpful in that process. So you'd need to see, whereas if I had just focused on the weight, I would have ignored all those other possibilities that were surrounding it. And I would have went the conventional way because I would have cut off my intuition and stopped the process from happening and stop stopping the universe and limiting the universe from being able to deliver. So that's one of the things that can go wrong is that we actually set goals, not intentions. When the goals aren't inspiring enough, the universe is not going to move to create them for us, right? Because we're not inspired. The next thing that you might notice, and we've covered this a little bit, is about the emotional involvement in it. It's very, very important for us to be emotionally charged when setting our intentions but obviously not attached to the outcome and they're two very very different things but it's important for us to understand the difference so we've kind of covered how to be emotionally 
um, charged with our intentions, to be inspired, to find something that really drives us forward or moves us away from something we no longer want so that we can bring it closer, right? When we're emotionally excited and inspired about something, it's very easy for the universe to deliver. Um, and when if we can stay emotionally detached to the outcome, which means, yes, I really want to create this, and the universe can deliver any way, shape, or form, I am totally open to that because that's their job, not mine, right? So if we give that over to the universe to deliver and we start to pay attention, then it'll all start to come together, all right? So it's very, very important that we get those two correct, the whole emotional um, involvement in our intentions so they need to be emotionally charged but when it comes to the attachment there needs to be no emotion attached to the outcome okay the other thing that can sometimes usually go wrong when we're setting our intentions and give me a hands up if any of these are resonating with you because I'd love to love to see where this is hitting the mark for some of you is that even though we set the intention we actually deep down don't believe that we can have it or that we can do it. So we set an intention because it's all fluffy and lovey and everyone says that's what you gotta do because that's what's in all the formulas, right? And it's in mine too. But the thing is that if you truly and utterly don't believe you can have it or that you deserve it is another one, then it's never gonna come, right? Doesn't matter how much you do all the different formulas out there, the 15, the 20 step series, or my three step formula, it doesn't matter what you do. If you truly do not believe that you deserve it or that it will come, it will not come. All right. You will then attract everything to prove that belief that you aren't worthy of it, that you don't deserve it, that it won't come. You will find everything because our brain is trained that way, right? Our brain will look for the things that prove our beliefs. And if we continually believe that we aren't worthy or that we don't deserve something, then our brain will flood us with proof. It's really, really simple. So what we need to do is if that's the case, try and, that's why I go back to the incremental intentions right because when we go big you know they all go go big or go home right and you know well I'm already at home so I can't you know <laughs> it doesn't work for all of us but when you do the incremental increases it's only just out of our reach and our beliefs don't get triggered enough for us to say no we don't deserve it it's almost like a little mind trick right so we have the limiting belief that we don't deserve what, what we desire. So when we desire the house, our limiting belief says we don't deserve it. So then, of course, we don't get it. But what we need to focus on is if we just focus on getting a higher paying job and then we focus on saving our money and then we focus on reducing our debt, you know, and then we focus on the little things, all of those steps that we that I'm talking about there will get you to that house, right? All of them will get you to that house because logic and history has shown us it does. So if we just focus on the little steps, it doesn't trigger our system to go into shock and our fear and ego to step in and go, whoa, no way, we can't do this. This is too far for us, right? And that's what happened. Because we all sit there and we're like, we see them on YouTube or Facebook or whatever it is. They all go, I manifested this $150,000 car overnight. I can tell you, they didn't do it overnight, right? Unless, of course, they're an influencer and someone on Instagram then said, oh, can you please advertise my car? Because you have so many followers, right? And chances are they don't get to keep it. Right? You've got to be aware of the ones that are making those outrageous claims because they didn't get there that way to start with. Right, Nothing happens overnight. And this is why when we work on these things in our group, some people have results within a week of setting their intentions. Right, You know, 
Carol's had four out of five things come through on her intention list in a week. You know, I had I put on my intention list um, for four people to sign up for my retreat. Within an hour of setting my intention, two had signed up. And within a week, another two had signed up. I hadn't even gotten to the, the last stage of the intentions. Like I hadn't even got through the whole process before some things had started to come through. But that's because they were incremental. If I had gone, I need 15 people for my retreat, then, you know, my fear-based system would have kicked in, going, oh, my God, you're not worthy. No one's going to want to come and listen to you. Don't be stupid. Who's going? How are you going to get 15 people to sign up in four weeks? Like, you are absolutely nuts. These are all the things that go through your head, and I'm no different to anybody else. These are all things that we all experience, and a lot of those thoughts aren't our own, by the way. So you can chuck those in the bin if they're no longer helping you. You don't need to keep them. No one said you had to, right? But if you don't do the incrementals, see, four, four I was kind of, you know, I thought, oh, two. Yeah, I could probably swing two, you know, just in pure logic. So I, I did an extra two. Just, just to push it a little bit, just to, you know, go, righto, well, I need to make sure it's a little bit higher than where I expect. And we got it because it was incremental. And it's so super important to do it that way, right? Hey, give me a thumbs up or anything if this is resonating with you. So today has all been about our first step, our first stage of the formula, which is all about intention setting. So we've talked about setting the intentions, why it needs to be an intention and not a goal, right? What works is all about the incremental intentions, the visualizations, and we also need to focus on the um, emotion joy. That's a really important emotion throughout the entire manifesting process. Now, a lot of people will teach you out there when it comes to the visualization to, yes, visualize what your life will be like with these things, but also... You need to focus, once you're out of your visualization, find joy in the moments. Focus on gratitude, find the joy. Everywhere around you, find joy. The more you can stay in the vibration of joy, the more things will manifest quickly, right? Joy is a vibrational match to what you desire. So if you can stay in that state of joy and gratitude, because they both will bring them to you, then it doesn't matter what you're focusing on when you feel those things, then just focus on those emotions, right? Even if it means like, for example, for me, um, with the manifesting of the retreat clients, I actually didn't focus on them at all. So I did my visualization and then I let it go, right? I just left it. But what I did do is each day I would find things that I was grateful for so that I could stay in that state of joy and gratitude. And then I would also go down the line along, you know, there'd be a moment with my children where they'd come and hug me or give me a kiss and it was really nice and just joyous in that moment. And it's finding those tiny little moments that bring us joy and that we're grateful for because gratitude doesn't have to be the big stuff, right? It can be the small stuff too. And most of the time, the small stuff's more powerful than the big. So we just need to be aware. And when we can bring that into our awareness and focus on it more, it keeps us in the, the right vibrational state to bring these things to us without even having to visualize it, focus on it every single day. You just got to find what feels good. And if you can stay in a state of feeling good, even if you have a bad day, it doesn't matter, right? You can have a shitty day and as long as you just reach for the better feeling, reach for the better feeling until you get back to the state of joy and gratitude, then you will feel better and you will get there quicker every time, all right? So they're the things that we've covered off today. So intentions is all about our, that's our first step in our formula, is all about intentions. We've talked about why intentions, not goals, what works, why incremental intentions is the big key factor here and how we need to make sure that we're emotionally invested in our intentions and they're emotionally charged but we're not attached to the outcome. 
That is the universe's choice as to how they deliver it, not ours. And you have to keep those beliefs in check. If you find that you're getting a little bit of a shock, like <gasps> when you're setting your intentions, you've gone too big, right? Just until you're starting to feel confident in your manifesting, go a little bit smaller, all right? Don't make, don't make the increment so big. Just, just smidgens, right? Smidgens until you feel better. Until you're starting to get confident and you're trusting the universe will deliver, just do smidgens, okay? So that's all for today. Tomorrow we will talk about inspired action. That is the second step in our manifesting magic challenge. And it goes for three days. So this is day one. If you have loved this video and you found it inspiring, please share it with everyone you know. If there's anyone who may get great value out of this, you can tag them in the post as well. I look forward to seeing you all tomorrow at five o'clock, same time, same crazy bat channel. And I will see you for day two of Manifesting Magic. See you later.